Hey guys, uh, my name's Adam, if this is your first time here, and uh, today I'm going to be discussing the movie Top Gun with you. Uh, this movie came out in 1986, it was the biggest movie of 86, actually one of the biggest movies of the 80s. I remember when I was a kid, going to Canada's Wonderland, which is sort of like our version of Disneyland around here, going to Canada's Wonderland and seeing, there was Top Gun rides and Top Gun was everywhere, I think they had an IMAX actually that you could watch Top Gun on. Uh, I know that they had uh, those chairs that you could move, that would move around in the IMAX theater and you could watch Days of Thunder, which is sort of, sort of along the same thing. But anyway, um, this movie stars, uh, whew. this movie stars Val Kilmer, uh, it's probably one of Val Kilmer's biggest movies, I would say it is, and uh, Tom Cruise, of course. Uh, it's basically about these fighter pilots, they're the best in the world, and they're in a class that's supposed to make them better. I'm not sure how that works if they're already the best in the world, but that's what the movie claims. Um, it's clear from the get-go that Val Kilmer and uh, Tom Cruise are the very best, and they butt heads over it. Val Kilmer is the best because he's very by the books, straight-laced, does what he's told, doesn't get emotional when he's flying. Tom Cruise, on the other hand, is uh, the maverick, exactly as his name says. He thinks outside the box sometimes. He's so good because he's willing to try new things. Now, uh, these two ideals, obviously, they, uh, they clash, and uh, there's a lot of conflict between these two characters because of it, and of course the, competitive, the competitiveness that they have as well. Um, also, very, I have, I can't do this review without mentioning, a character dies in this movie. I don't want to spoil it. I'm sure, you know, some other people will, but um, this character dies. I would say it's one of the more significant deaths in cinema history. I know that's sort of a, a bold statement to say, but whenever, uh, si whenever movie deaths come up, this character's name is always one of the first that comes out. And anytime you mention this character's name, the first thing everyone says is, it was so emotional when he died. And, uh, which is interesting when you really think about it, because there's a lot of movies with a lot of, even main characters that die, but this one is the one that's always the tip of everyone's tongue when, uh, when the movie deaths come up. So, I think it's, uh, like I said, a pretty memorable death. Uh, the reason I think it's so memorable is because he was really just a nice guy. He just wanted to enjoy life to the fullest, support his family. Uh, even, you know, one of the antagonists uh, actually goes out of their way and says, Everybody liked this guy. So, yeah, I think that was why it was uh, such a significant death. The, th the, the lesson I think that we're supposed to learn from this movie is that you can agree or disagree with someone personally, and that doesn't have anything to do with how you feel professionally. The reason I say this is the love interest, um, her name is Charlie, she feels very strongly towards Tom Cruise. There's, you know, obviously a love interest, and uh, Professionally, though, they don't get along at all. They disagree. They can't, uh, she can't support him professionally because of his maverick ways. Whereas, uh, the same thing basically goes for Iceman. He'll fly with him, they'll fly together, but, uh, they don't, uh, necessarily agree personally. And towards the end of the movie, it sort of changes. I don't want to spoil it, but they seem to get along more personally despite their professional differences and of course in the beginning uh, the character one of my favorite scenes is uh, the character who's I don't know his name but I should he's in every movie but uh, he plays the same guy the authoritative sort of guy he's the principal from back to the future he he tears a strip off of Tom Cruise but he seems to actually like him personally. And that's where I want to get into my likes and dislikes. My likes and dislikes for this movie, and it seems to be a running theme with my, uh, my reviews, is that um, it's the same thing. And the reason it is the same thing in this one is, is what I like and dislike is the double talk that all the characters do. It seems like they tried so hard to emphasize that you can feel one way or another, that you can have these conflicting views about someone. You can dislike them for one thing but still like them in another way. The, I, I just love how in one in that scene, he tears a strip off of him and he goes, God damn it, Maverick, I gotta do the one thing that I hate the most. I gotta fulfill your dream. Good luck. I'm rooting for you. Like, what? And uh, the Charlie character, she tears a strip off of him in front of everyone, and then she goes, the one thing I didn't want to say in front of everyone is that I think you're a genius, and I don't want everybody to know that I'm in love with you. It's just sort of goes so far left and then swings right so suddenly that you almost have to treat it like a comedy. It's so such drastically contrasting ideas. Um, 
Also, uh, another thing, I feel like I can't do this without mentioning uh, Quentin Tarantino's stance on this movie. He, uh, there's a video out there, I think it's from a movie that he did, where he talks about how this movie is actually about uh, Tom Cruise's struggle with, uh, well I guess it's Maverick, struggling between homosexuality and heterosexuality. I think that's, obviously he's joking when he says that, but uh, there's some pretty valid points that he makes, you know, uh, he finally gets a chance to sleep with this Charlie girl and then he just kind of goes and says, well, you know what, actually I gotta go take a shower. And then the next time they see each other, he says this in, in his thing, is uh, she's dressed like a guy because she's trying to step up her game. I don't know, I, obviously that's all, uh, that's all, that's all in fun. I, uh, I don't want to say anything that could be misconstrued as hateful, but if you want to watch this movie that way, it's definitely there. It also puts a lot of context to that weird... What was up with that volleyball thing? Like, these two guys hate each other, but they have time to sort of chum around and have a basically naked game of volleyball together. I don't know. And uh, Tarantino's idea also puts context to that uh, sort of... They have this weird hostility. Iceman and Maverick have that weird hostility, but they also... They also seem to be a little bit chummy together. I don't know. Obviously, that's, uh, that's, like I said, that's his thing. If you want to watch it that way, you can. Um, if you like my review, please hit like. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this movie. If you think Tarantino's idea holds up, let me know. Or if you think it's ridiculous, let me know. And of course, if this is your first time here, subscribe for more content. I do at least two videos a week. Thanks, and have a good day.